All right, we have one more Battlefield company in this segment. It is Unify ID. Presenting for Unify ID are going to be John Whaley and Kurt Somerville. Once this table is set up, I'm really curious what they're going to use this table for. All right, come on out, guys. All right, welcome to the stage. All right, six minutes, you ready to go? Let's do it. Go. Yeah, all right. How do you identify people? Is it the way they look? <laughs> Maybe you look at their face, their smile, their voice, their possessions, the places you see them. Once you know someone well enough, maybe you can recognize them by the way they walk or the way they move, the sound of their footsteps, their heartbeat. What is it that makes you, you? You're not a nine-digit number. You're not a piece of plastic with your photo on it. And you're certainly not a password with a capital letter, a number, and a symbol. I'm John Whaley, and this is Kurt Somerville, and we are the founders of UnifyID. And we are changing the way you authenticate yourself. We use biometric and behavioral factors to build a unique digital fingerprint of you and use that to authenticate and secure your identity. It's called implicit authentication, and it's going to revolutionize the way you authenticate yourself, both online and offline. Let me show you. So I have the UnifyID app installed on my phone, as well as on the computer. Now, once you install UnifyID, you don't need to deal with passwords or authentication again. When you go to a website like Amazon.com, can we switch to the demo computer, please? Great, thanks. When you go to a website like Amazon.com, you click one button and you're in. UnifyID uses the recent sensor data from your phone, computer, wearables, and other nearby devices. If the signals match, you're in. No passwords to remember, no codes to read off your phone, and no fuss. This is the future of authentication. Now, I'll hand my phone to Kurt, and he'll try to do the same thing. Kurt's going to walk over, sit down, and try to log in. Now, Kurt has my computer. He has my phone. He even knows my passcode, which, by the way, is 5555. Don't worry, that's the same passcode as over 6 million other Americans. <laughs> now, unfortunately for Kurt, the signals don't match, and Kurt is denied login. And yes, if you look on my phone, I should have received a notification with details of the login attempt. So can we switch to the overhead projector? Great. So how did that work? Let's switch back to the presentation computer. Let's take a look at some of the sensor data from the phone and the computer. Now, you may have noticed both Kurt and I awkwardly walking across the stage. That's because one of the factors we use to authenticate you is how you walk. Now, Kurt and I are the same height. We're the same build. In fact, we even have the same shoe size. And we seemingly walk the same, but the sensor data tells a different story. You can actually tell the difference between my walking and Kurt's walking just from the sensor data from the phones in our pocket. Now let's take a look at some of the data from the keyboard on the computer. Again, we don't look at what you type, we look at how you type. And we can actually distinguish between my typing and Kurt's typing even after a few keystrokes. These are just two factors of over 100 different attributes that go into our proprietary machine learning system that automatically discovers what makes you unique. This spans from the way you move, to the places you go, to the signals from the devices around you. There's a lot of sophisticated signal processing and machine learning to make it all happen, but the result is magical. UnifyD has applications in streamlining authentication, reducing fraud, and preventing account takeover. Unlike other techniques, we use passive factors to identify the human behind the device. So we naturally work cross-device, and we don't require any conscious user action. We're in private beta right now, and we're working with some of the top technology and financial services companies to evaluate and deploy UnifyID. Our solution has clear applicability to the $170 billion cybersecurity market and the $600 billion e-commerce market. 
Not only that, but we see this extending for offline use cases as well, for example, with IoT devices, which both have a need for security as well as are an additional source of sensor data. In the immediate term, one of our partners has a big problem with account takeover, and we are working with them to incorporate UnifyID's technology on their mobile app and on their website. Another partner has a problem with password resets. Over 30% of their help desk calls are password reset calls. These are both problems we're solving for them immediately. We're a group of security and machine learning experts from MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, and CMU, and we're out to fix authentication forever. My co founder and I worked together at our previous enterprise security startup that got acquired last year. We have experience in selling to Fortune 500 and Global 2000 companies, and we understand what it takes to build and deploy real security solutions that directly touch end users. Humans have always been thought of as the weak link in security. At Unify ID, we're flipping that around and using what's unique about each individual to enhance security. We believe the best way to authenticate yourself is to be yourself. I'm John Whaley. We are Unify ID. Come to our website and sign up for our private beta so you too can experience the future of authentication. Thank you. Awesome. Ten seconds to spare. Great. All right. Judges, are you convinced? Questions? That's cool stuff, man. Um, uh, what's the, I'm wondering how baked it is. What's the false negative percentage at this point? Yeah, so it turns out that, that、uh, you know, it was surprising to us, but actually, individuals are both very unique and very predictable. And so,、um, even after a little bit of, just a little bit of training data, we can actually uniquely identify people. I mean, for example, the, the walking that we showed, like we have our gait analysis with only four seconds of data, we can actually uniquely identify them based on four seconds of walking data. And that's just one factor out of many, many factors. And so, what, what's, key, what's key to our solution is actually combining multiple sensors, multiple factors from different devices. If you're just looking at a single device, you can't get it accurate, and it's not accurate enough. You need to combine. Th- you know, data from your computer, from wearables, from your phone. And when you combine these together, that's when the accuracy goes up. So, what we have found from our, from our initial user set is that after we have data from four sensors, we, dr- we, we get five nines of, of accuracy.、Oh. So, this is 99.999% <clears throat> of that, that is, it's, it's going to be you. And, that, and which, of those four factor, which of those four sensors it is really depends on the individual. Some people, Their location is very predictable. Like the, the, the path that you go to work and home every day is very predictable. Other people, you know, they may have a wearable or like, you know, whatever, whatever the factor is, it, it, has to, it varies a lot. So we, we're, we're not really tied to any particular kind of technology.、Um, we're just looking at,、uh, we're just combining many different factors together、um, and using this machine learning system that we built、uh, to, to get accurate results. So, so is that essentially, I mean, Is what you're saying zero, basically zero false negatives?、Uh, so, the, um, so you can never say there's, ze- there's zero. F- so the, well, there's false okay, positives point, and point false negatives. 0.0001. Zero, 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 so so our, our algorithms are very much tuned towards、um, ha- having false negatives are okay. I mean, that basically means we th-、uh, like we're not sure if it's you, so、uh, we're going to challenge you in some way. And so we have a number of different active challenge factors you can use, like Fingerprints, like facial recognition, and a few others that are in, in development. The thing we really want to avoid is, is all, all the false positives where somebody who is not you then gets misidentified as you. Well, but there's the annoyance factor.、Uh, I mean, a, a password's a basically 100%、right. false, false negative, or <laughs> 0% false negative if I remember my password, right? And yeah, that,、um, yeah that, that's right. So we, we, we work hard to,、um, to reduce the false negative. And actually, what happens is over time, the system learns more and more about you. And so it learns what makes you unique.、Mm-hmm. And so at the beginning, you're challenged quite often. And then over time, as we learn more, more and more about you, you know, after about a week, t- a, a week of time then,、uh, of, of having this app on your phone as well as on your computer, Then、um, we, we hit a very high level of accuracy at that point. And then once we hit four weeks, we, we max out the accuracy. Because some of the factors you use are things about、um, y- your routine, for example. You know, like we see every Monday morning you go to the gym. And so this is something that we can use to actually authenticate you. But in order, in order to learn that, we need to see you go to the gym multiple times over weeks. So some of these factors are longer term, some of these factors we can、uh, pick up almost in, immediately just, you know, f- from just a few seconds of sensor data. How many, different factors, sorry. Go ahead. How many different factors are you matching on? So, we're using the, the sensors on your phone and on your computer and wearables if you have them.、Mm-hmm. And so, 
there, there's over 100 different attributes um, and that are basically different permutations of these sensors. And then we use some, techno some technology like sensor fusion and, um, and signal processing and such to combine these together into various things. I mean, some, ex some more examples of these, you know, we, we talked about gate. There's multiple aspects to gate. There's things like your cadence, the length of your swing phase. We can estimate the length of your femur, like these type of things. There's, when you're sitting down, it's actually very unique to you. Um, the signals from all the devices around you as we walk up to the computer, you know, the, the Bluetooth telemetry is in increasing. And that's not even including things like wearables. And we're exploring things like using heartbeat, like your unique, heart, unique aspects to your heartbeat to identify you. I mean, this is really, you know, if you think back to, you know, how does authentication work? You know, it's, you know, this whole notion of the password is just so completely broken. You know, I have a secret and then I tell you that secret and that's how you know it's me. You know, um, this, this, this problem of, of identification, you know, and authentication goes back, you know, to prehistoric times where how did people identify each other? They, they looked, you know, they saw what you looked like. They saw what you're wearing. They saw where you, you know, the context where they saw you, the sound of your voice, things like that. And so effectively, we just built a machine learning system that, that does, you know, much what the human brain does. What about way. if you want to give someone your password? Hmm? What if you want to give someone your password? Let's great, say I'm stuck somewhere question. in the middle of nowhere and I need somebody to access something for me. It would be really frustrating if they couldn't. That, that's, a, that's an excellent question because right now the way you share access with something is you give somebody your password. I mean, and the problem with that is that you've now shared your password cool. and you have to go sh you know, you know, change it or whatever and then you've given them full access. I mean, once you tie authentication to the person and not to a password and not to a device, then it's, it's something that's much more powerful. So that's something that we are building into, the, in, into our system is the ability to delegate, um, delegate access to individuals, not on a wholesale, you know, but we can actually set policies about when people can actually access. Right. How um, does it work? Sessions. Is it like, uh, does all the sites I use have to use it? Is it like one password where I, it's, a, it's a weblet or it's an app and I can unlock it? It's individual for me and I can use it everywhere or are you looking at everyone else needs to implement it for you to use it. Answer as quickly as you can. Yeah. yeah. So, um, real quick, we yeah. have a Chrome extension uh, that works with Alexa top 500 sites, so there's a good, really good chance that the site that you're visiting, uh, our Chrome extension is going to work on that. So when you get to the site, you're no longer going to see username and password anymore. So it's going to be a very seamless experience, very smooth, uh, and far more secure than using traditional usernames and passwords. Okay, guys, give it up. Oh, okay. I have one yes or no question. All right, we'll do one. We'll wait, do wait. one. Since we did dig into gate a little bit, um, have you tested the difference between if I'm trying to open the password wearing a pair of Converse All-Stars versus when I put on a pair of high heels? Oh, yes. Yeah, there is, there is a very clear difference. I mean, there, and this is why you can't rely on a single factor because any solution that requires on a single factor, um, you know, it has too, too, too much noise, too high of a false positive rate, which is why you have to use many different factors together. Okay. All right, give it up one more time for Unify ID. All right.